Now, I'm just sort of looking around here to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the Mounties aren't going to come in and arrest me because I'm daring to discuss the abortion issue on, on Canadian TV and, and not give all of the time and attention to the pro-choice. I'm being generous in that description, the pro-choice side. This is a debate we have to have. We, we, we will labor for hours, days, about one slight point of, of, of GST or HST or whatever. But when it comes to human life, we say, don't talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. Um, in Washington, in Washington, this is uh, quite incredible, and Lila Rose is my guest from there. The, the, the March for Life. Now, Lila, Lila, tell me, have I got this wrong? I heard numbers of getting on for half a million people, 400,000 people at the march. Is this true? Mm -hmm. It's very true. It was phenomenal. Yesterday, we had people from all over the country, all over the world. I ran into Canadians that were there marching in, in the rain, in the cold, and some of the estimates were over 400,000 people in the streets of D.C. marching for life. This is the 40th year marching for life, standing up for the rights of the unborn child because we see it as the most fundamental right. We see the right to life as the most fundamental right that we have. Yeah. We have uh, the, Pride, the Gay Pride Parade every year in Toronto, and it's in summer, not in January, so it's beautiful weather, and they always claim a million people. <laughs> That's an utter, complete lie. There's a grid system. The numbers are probably around 200, 250,000. But these are documented, mm -hmm. and in fact, people like to put the, the March for Life lower down if they can. It could even be greater than that. But I remember a time when the March for Life in Washington was the largest gathering of people in the history of that city at that point. This is about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even mentioned in the Washington Post. Are you getting much coverage now? It's, 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 it's a sham what's happening because, if, for example, the New York Times, one of our leading um, news sources, hasn't reported on the March for Life for five years now in a row. So it, it's insane that the lack of media coverage for a march that's drawing mostly young people yeah. in the hundreds of thousands from across the world to March for Life in, in the most consistent human rights movement that our country has ever seen. I mean, we've been marching now for 40 years, every year, hundreds of thousands, nearing half a million now. And the me news media, the central news media is not reporting on it. We see maybe a few side stations out there, but you don't see the ne main networks out there covering the march. The only time they cover the march, Michael, is when we have a few hundred protesters from the opposition who are in support of abortion standing up at the Supreme Court where we end the march and standing up there. Mm -hmm. But we have hundreds of thousands and they have maybe a few hundred. And it's just astonishing to see the lack of coverage for our marchers when most of them are young people mm -hmm. from all over the country who are giving up so much of their time and it's standing in the rain and they're not just here standing out on January 22nd yesterday Monday but they're all standing up on their campuses we have hundreds of high school and college campuses across the country now that have pro-life organizations actively working on them this is a youth movement and the opposition especially the news media doesn't want to report on that and doesn't want to what doesn't want to doesn't want to give us that even though that that's the reality of what's happening mm -hmm. well there was a case uh, World Youth Day the Roman Catholic of Event, and the media spent a lot of time covering a small group of people. We think there between, were between 12 and 15 of them um, who were protesting uh, mm -hmm. the Pope being in, in Spain, in Madrid. And there was a wonderful photograph. Uh, the first one showed the standard press photographs of, of these demonstrators. And the next one had the wider uh, sort of panoramic view. And they were surrounded peacefully by tens of thousands of the people who were there to see the Pope. Uh, media often yep. distorts reality. Yep. And they estimated, I got to attend that event in Madrid in this past August, World Youth Day. They estimated over a million young people from across the world. And again, it's this, this activity of some of the media, even internationally, the media not covering people of faith or not covering the pro-life position. But I got to tell you, Michael, that those the days of traditional news media are coming to are nearing more and more its close because oh, of the great. rise of I'll new media. I'll get another media, job. Thank the rise you. Rise of social media. <laughs> 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 well, hopefully, people that are willing to report on the reality of what's happening, the reality of our movement, the reality of where young people are at. But we're seeing with the rise of new media, um, you can get your media online. So many diversified sources that the, the even though the elites and in old media, traditional media like in the U.S., CNN and and, um, and MSNBC and NBC, these different CBS, these different elitist media groups, they're getting lower and lower viewer rates compared to the 
the views and the, the news that's being consumed online. Mm -hmm. And that's good because this is w more ways for the truth to get out and the and actual reporting to be able to take place. And, and of course, many in mainstream media, I, I include myself in that, when we're not really of, well, I suppose, the established <laughs> mainstream, but we're a, a television network, many people go now to the blogs and the websites to find the news. Mm -hmm. They then give it a certain legitimate status by having it on TV. But you're, you're quite right in this. Um, just very briefly, politicians, it seems that there's, there's no Democrat who's really willing to stand up on life issues. But within the Republican Party, is there a candidate or maybe two candidates who you think are the people for you? It's a good question. Um, I think that we have we have a very interesting political field right now for the for the Republican race is the primaries in the U.S. where we're trying to pick our nominee for the president for the presidency. And right now, I, I think my favorites are probably Santorum, uh, Rick Santorum, who's a, who's a very staunch former senator, very yep. strong to stand up for life, great pro-life record. And then we have. Former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, who also has a strong pro-life record. Yeah. There are other candidates that have changed their minds in the past, and so they, it seems they're p perhaps changing their minds for the pro-life position because of political expediency. So it's so important to consider the record before yeah. supporting a candidate. And I think that we have a few, a, a couple candidates that might be, um, at least one candidate that might be uh, more, some say, political expediency as opposed to actually. Go, being willing to stand up for the rights yeah. of the unborn and for the pro-life movement. Yeah, who would have thought such a thing could happen? Uh, well, hey, Newt could be your man. Very interesting. We can have his biographer on, actually, in a day or two. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Michael.